Thank you, Dr. Foreman. Um, I'm Ben Brosson. I'm a former student of the Rawson Academy. I've just finished a number of weeks ago. And um, I'm 17 years old, so not even eligible to vote in the upcoming European elections, but I'm eligible for a vote in the referendum. And I've been asked to give a young person's perspective on independence and why I'm planning on voting yes. My yes journey, so to describe it, started about two to three years ago when my good friend sitting alongside me asked me, walking to, walking to lunch at school, what do you, you think about Scottish independence? I mean, this, the, the argument was small at this point. There wasn't as much weight to it as there is now, not as much coverage. And I wasn't sure. I hadn't thought about it. I hadn't, I've never been political in my life. This is, this is the first thing that's ever grabbed my attention, so to speak. I, don't, I didn't, never knew much about politics, about politicians, about who I'd lived through, but I was aware of the, the situation I was living in, my, my town, my, the three towns, some of the living conditions and the, the, the lack of economy, the, just the lack of life within the three towns. Walking down Sawcoats High Street, I, I knew that that wasn't the way any high street was going to be. It doesn't matter if it's Sawcoats, if it's Glasgow, if it's the heart of your town, it shouldn't look the way Sawcoats High Street does. So I knew that I was living in the repercussions of past politicians, and I was just wondering why things were the way they were. So I started to think, how could we make things better? What would make things better? The only thing that made sense to me was voting yes. And I, vote, I thought to myself, I, want, I wanted Scotland to be independent. And then I did reading, and my, my beliefs have only become stronger and stronger since. I believe that being, a, being 17, this is, I'm one of the, I'm going to live with the outcome of this referendum for the longest. Out, my generation and people a couple of years younger than me, we're going to live with this decision that's going to be made on 18 September for the longest. And I think that is very, very important. I myself, I'm not a member of any political party. I don't hold an alliance to any political party. But there's one thing that I'll definitely agree with the SNP on, that's just the title of the white paper, Scotland's Future. That's what we're deciding here. And I remember talking to a woman, late 70s, about what she was planning on voting. She said she was voting yes because she wants what's best for the future of Scotland. And I thought there was something beautiful about that. A woman who doesn't have as long left as what I do, but she still cares about the future of our nation. Being the age I am, I have been subject to a lot of criticism. People saying I'm too young to vote, too stupid. Very similar to the arguments of the Better Together campaign as well, may I just add. But I thought, what can I do at 16, 17? 16 years old, you can have a family, you can get married, you have your house, and you can go and you can die for your country on foreign soil. But you can't vote for a party or an issue which you believe will stop you from having to, for that to be a risk to you. Right now, we have 30 miles from our largest centre of population, with 800,000 of our Scottish people live. We have a weapon of mass destruction which we have no control over. We want, as a nation, we want rid of it. And we can get rid of it because of the system that we're a part of. Next, in the coming months, I'm planning on going to university. And I'm very, very thankful for the current Scottish Government. That is going to be a possibility for me. I'm the only child of a single parent who's disabled and therefore unable to work. And the thought of me having to pay £9,000 a year to go to university, to study what I want to do, and to make what I want of my life, that wouldn't be possible. Not just difficult, that would be impossible for me. And I think that's some, this is, that, that argument has more to it than just free higher education. I believe that a yes vote will allow us to fully utilise the assets of our country. And I'm not talking about oil, I'm not talking about energy, I'm not talking about whiskey or tartan, any industry. I'm talking about the young people of Scotland, I'm talking about the people of Scotland as a whole. A yes vote gives us a chance to make the most of them, not make them a liability, not try and shepherd me into zero hour contracts, but to allow me the possibilities to make what I want for myself and to be able to benefit my country because of that. 
Scotland's got some of the best universities in the developed world. And our engineers are renowned worldwide for being some of the best. We've always had a great industry, a great history of engineers and industrial workers. Why should we let a government that we didn't vote for and we have no plans on voting for take that away from us? I don't believe that's, I don't believe that's right. As Gary said, we've got, um, we have, there's a Labour peer suggesting that it's, he doesn't see why it would be wrong for us to pay £10 to go see a doctor. Labour peer. Really, all, all that I know of the Labour Party and of politics in general has come through reading and talking to people, very little through ex first-hand experience. And I think that kind of proposal from what's supposed to be the People's Party, that shouldn't be what we want in Scotland. We should want parties which genuinely care for the working class, for all classes of Scotland, not for the southeast of England and not for the people who reside there in their interests. I'd like to thank you for listening. I just want to finish by saying, remember that on 18 September, taking our future into our hands and our own people will be then cared for by our, our own people, our family. Thank you very much. Hiya, um, my name is Gavin Lundy. Uh, I, didn't, I had no idea I was to speak tonight, so I've not really had much prepared. Although I'm lucky enough to have got a haircut and a shave on like our last two speakers. <laughs> And I'm, uh, I'm here today to tell you why we should choose to become an independent Scotland. But first, I'll, I'll give you a wee bit of insight as to how I get involved. Well, for the last couple of years, I've basically came to the inescapable, inescapable conclusion that the decisions that affect Scotland really should just be taken by normal, ordinary Scottish people, rather than an out-of-class political class, out-of-touch political class in Westminster. I got involved basically through attending a few public meetings and then after that it's just been, it's just skyrocketed and I hope to continue to do things like this as we go on, but let me, let me get into it. Um, as you know, our main, our, main, our main opponent in this campaign is Better Together. And they will give you loads of um, assertions and, and they claim that we have, we, all we ever do is assert things, but they will give you uncertain uh, assertions like, oh, there's going to be all this uncertainty you know, Godzilla will come and uh, attack Glasgow and everyone's going to die and everything, and we're all gonna be, we're going to be invaded by North Korea. Really, that's what it comes down to. The kind, of, the kind of arguments that they really give is always comes down to, you know, uncertainty and security. How much, uncertain, how much certainty does the UK provide? I, as said by Gary, I'm pretty sure a lot of people in this room probably voted for Labour in 1997. I know my family did, and a lot of my friends and uh, friends did. How many people thought we were going to invade Iraq? Did anyone in, in this room think that was going to happen? Is that certainty? No, I don't think so. Security, for example, is another, is, is the next biggest argument they have. And uh, when, what it comes down to, right, is do we, do, is Scotland pro protected? I mean, you can look at what's happened today. We've just had, was it 200, million pounds of cocaine just coming in because we don't have anyone patrolling our waters. So there we go, the security argument doesn't stack up either. But they will make these assertions uh, repeatedly and um, there really isn't any evidence to back them up. When you propose an argument, you need to give sufficient evidence, otherwise it can't stand up. That which can be asserted without evidence can be dismissed without argument. And that's why I think you'll see that yes tends to win uh, local debates and events like that in a, in, a, in a percentage much higher than the no campaign. Because what, what it always comes down to with them is, uh, oh, I don't really like, I don't really like that Alex Salmon guy. I'm not a fan of the SNP. Let me tell you, I'm probably never going to join the SNP. I, I'll probably get more of uh, a green leaning, but we'll see, we'll see what happens. And, uh, I'm pretty sure it, there's only a few, I think one member of our panel here that's a member of SNP, so it's not, it doesn't come, it's nothing like that. What it is, is just giving the people of Scotland the power to make our own decisions. 
And, uh, I'll, and what, what I will also, also say is that just in the last couple of weeks, we've, uh, the campaign that I'm part of, the Generation Yes campaign, launched. And I will challenge you to look into my eye and tell me that this is about Alex Hammond, SNP. I mean, I, I like to, I, I, what, what would probably happen is when, when I'm, you know, getting on a bit and I've had some children is that they'll say, why, why did folk uh, vote no? It's like, oh, they didn't like that salmon. I'm pretty sure you wouldn't know who, the, 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 my, my children won't know who that is. So it's, it's, all, it's about our future. And as Ben said, it's, and, and the white paper says, it's about taking Scotland's future into Scotland's hands and making sure we get the governments we vote for. Social justice will always be better delivered by, by the parties that actually want to deliver it, and Tories and Westminster just won't, won't ever do that. The Scottish people have always voted for, uh, in at, least, at least in living memory, for, mostly for parties uh, that put social justice at the top of their priorities. You look at exciting movements like the Common Wheel, which Robin, McAl uh, like Robin McAlpine was going, supposed to be here tonight to talk about, which are giving new and exciting policies to really, to, that are challenging policies to revamp this country. I'll give you an example uh, of how social justice just doesn't exist in Scotland currently. I mean, this, this Christmas there was hundreds of thousands of Scottish children homeless. We have some of the worst pensions in the European Union. And we're, I think, the, now the third or second most unequal country in the OECD. That doesn't happen to countries like Norway, Sweden, Finland, Denmark, Iceland, even Ireland and stuff. That, does, that, doesn't, that just doesn't happen to small European countries. We should, do, we, should, we should be doing a lot better on this. And while we're, talk, while we're talking about Europe there, in the, down south we have this massive rise of UKIP, which, to be honest, is only partly attached to the European Union. It has a lot to do with uh, a clamour for, blame, for blaming, say, immigrants or, uh, and blaming, le and blaming left wing policy, which uh, was never really implemented properly by Labour governments. And you can see that, especially now, especially now you see people like Ed, Mil Ed Miliband that are, have a cheek to actually call themselves left wing. But, but, the U but UKIP is moving the political, polit political ass in Westminster further and further to the right. And that's something Scotland just does not have time for. And basically, in all of these points together, which is that the yes, the yes campaign has all the best arguments and we have all the necessary evidence to justify them, I urge you to go and look and find this evidence and you'll see that independence is the best choice for us. You'll see the young people that are out in our streets campaigning and doing our best to make sure that we make the right decision in September and we can really look after our future and, and plan for better things. Think like you're living in the early days of a better nation, better nation, because that's what this is. We have an opportunity to completely do things different in Scotland and be a beacon in the and being a beacon in the world, instead of being an unequal right-wing society. Social justice, European Union membership, and a future for young people. These are three things. These are the three things that I've really covered tonight. I'm sure, if, I'm sure if we had more time, I, w I, w I would go on about it a lot more, but this is why I think that you should, we should all go on 18th September and put a tick in the box to take national sovereignty back and give us a right to control our own country. And that's why I think we should choose to become an independent country. I was, I was round the corner when I got a phone call with my friend saying, you, Ben, you're going to be speaking tonight. I, I had planned to just be sitting in one of the seats listening and maybe asking a question or two. So what was, what was that like? Qu quite terrifying, to be honest. I, I, was, I, had, I do have a, a talk planned in the, in, the next, uh, in the next couple of weeks, so I had been uh, slightly preparing, but I had nothing prepared for tonight. I had, it was short, really short notice. I was quite worried about the thought of it. Well, I, I don't, uh, it was a bit... A bit nervous at the start there, but um, I had to write up a quick e-plan there, I had a couple of minutes and it was alright, I quite enjoyed it. You just wrote out a wee plan for a couple of minutes and that, that's it? Aye, that's, that's it, yeah. As far as it goes, yeah. yeah. Um, I've been invited to give a, a, another young person perspective on an event in Presswick in the next uh, coming weeks. So uh, it is, it is, uh, there are a lot of um, um, opportunities for young people to be getting involved and in having their opinions heard. I think it is important because I like to try and dispel the, the idea that uh, the youth generation aren't just voting yes because we watch Braveheart, we love Iron Brew, because I mean, I've never watched Braveheart and I'm a Dr Pepper man myself. I just think it's really important for 
the, the older generations and the, the, the older demographics start to realise that the young people aren't just aren't just patriotic voters. A lot of us are politically active, and we do know what we're actually fighting for. I'll be speaking in a, a Rawson in a couple of weeks' time, and then I'll also be speaking down Stevenson. So this is have you have you done this sort of thing before? I haven't actually. No, I've never been a member of the panel. I've spoken some public meetings just standing up, but uh, I've never been a member of the panel in that form. No. Well, I have to say, well done.